Namaskar and welcome to CC Gurukul Lectures. I am Dr. Kumar Shantanu, Associate Professor of Botany from Deshbandhu College, University of Delhi. We have in our previous lecture discussed about a very useful variation in the bright field microscope that is phase contrast microscopy. We have gone through the basic principles of phase contrast microscopy and we shall try to conclude uh, the basic components and basic structure of phase contrast microscopy in this lecture and then we shall further move ahead into other types of variations of light microscopy such as uh, polar light uh, microscopes. So, uh, let us begin our discussion with the diagram of a phase contrast microscope. So, in a schematic diagram, the phase contrast microscope contains two components, two components apart from all the usual components which we have already discussed for a light microscope. The, these two components are the condenser annulus and phase plate. The condenser annulus along with the condenser lens maintains or creates a phase light which incidences on the sample and because of the thickness of the sample there is a very slight change in the phase of the light as compared to the incident light. So, this changed transmitted light with a changed phase is further being enhanced and it is being uh, corrected with the help of a phase plate and because of the presence of this phase plate the objects differ in their brightness and uh, darkness and this change in the brightness and darkness creates a greater contrast at the image plane. So, in short the light that passes through the specimen will be diffracted by organelles, cell margins etc. and this light is retarded in phase. The background light and light that has passed through the specimen that is the transmitted light. They interact at the image plane causing wave interference with objects appearing bright against a uniform background which is dark. So, phase contrast microscope consists of a specialized phase condenser and phase objective lenses. Each phase setting of the condenser lens is in line with the phase setting of the objective lens. These are usually numbered as phase 1, phase 2 and phase 3 and they are visible on both the objective and condenser lenses. This results in a better visualization of the internal structure of the cells through phase contrast microscope than compared to bright field microscopes. Here is a schematic diagram of the pathway with which the light passes through a phase contrast microscope. So, at the bottom is a source of illumination that is a lamp. The source of illumination passes through the condenser aluminous. The condenser annulus allows the light to pass through the condenser in a particular phase. So, this light which passes through, through the condenser incidences on the specimen and because of the thickness and components of intracellular uh, components of the specimen, the velocity of the light changes. This velocity of light changed is reflected by the change in the phase of the transmitting light. So, this changed phase of the transmitting light which has passed through the specimen is further corrected at a, with the help of this phase plate and when it is visualized through the through the 
eye or any digital uh, imaging instrument, the object appears bright in a background of a dark in a dark background. So, as far as the application of phase contrast microscope is used uh, is concerned, it is most useful for examining intracellular components of living cells at relatively high resolution. It is widely used in microbiology and tissue culture research to detect bacteria, cellular organelles or for testing cells and organelles preparations for any kind of lysis. Also phase contrast microscope uh, allows the dynamic motility of mitochondria to be observed, the mitotic chromosomes and vacuoles can also be followed and filmed using this optics. As far as the limitation of phase contrast microscope is concerned, this microscope is only suitable for observing single cells or thin cell layers. Additionally, it has optical handicaps that result in loss of resolution and the image suffers from interfering halos and shading where sharp changes in reflect, uh, refractive index occur. Cells and their components appear to be surrounded by a white halo caused by inference fringes. This prevents uh, anyone from observing distinct edges of the specimen. So along with various applications, the phase contrast microscope also poses certain limitations. To overcome certain limit these kind of limitations, so we can use different variations of uh, light microscope. One such variation of light microscope is polarized light microscope. So what happens? The light and other forms of electromagnetic radiation normally vibrates in all directions. That is a universal phenomenon. A polarizing microscope utilizes polarizing filters. These polarizing filters, they are able to select light that vibrates only in one plane. And by using these filters, the information is provided about the cellular structures that are composed of well aligned elements such as microtubules or microfilaments uh, which has normally below the limit of resolution of a light microscope. So let us try to understand the basic principle of a polarized light microscope and how the polarized light is created. So from a source of light, the electromagnetic, the light, the visible light is an electromagnetic wave which has its wavelength in all different planes. And when we keep a polarizer, it allows the light to pass through and only those components which are moving in a fixed plane. So the unpolarized light when passes through a polarized object or a polarizer, it changes the unpolarized light into a polarized light. The observation through polarized light microscope is possible because of the optical properties of such structures referred to as birefringence. An object manifests birefringence by appearing bright when positioned between two polarizing filters oriented with their particular plane of transmission at right angle to one another. So what is a birefringent material? So when a polarized light 
passes through a birefringent material, it changes the direction of the wave and the transmitted light now has a wavelength which is perpendicular to the previously entering or incident polarized light axis. So, light passing through the first filter becomes plane polarized and in the absence of a birefringent specimen, none of the plane polarized light, none of the plane polarized light rays can pass through the second filter because the second filter is kept at a right angle to the first filter. This causes the field to appear absolutely black. However, if a specimen contains oriented elements that rotate plane uh, polarized light, the object appears bright against a black background. So, here is a schematic diagram which shows the movement of light rays through a plane uh, through a polarized light microscope. So, the light source emitting the light, these light rays passes through a polarizer, thus the condenser receives light waves which are plane polarized and these plane polarized condensed light when passes through the specimen because of the intracellular components of the specimen, the plane of the incidence light changes and then it passes through the objective. The other polarized plate which is called as lambda plate or wave front azimuths, they allow only those light to pass through which has changed its polarity and thus only those light which has changed its polarity are passed through the tube lens and the image is formed. Rest all the different lights which are not passing through the specimen and thus they have not changed any kind of uh, polarity is blocked by these lambda plate and analyzer and thus only those lights which have passed through the specimen they are reaching at the image plane and the image is made as a very bright and with the very detailed ones. Other most widely used contrast techniques also include fluorescence microscopy since it gives superior signal to noise ratio for many applications, but we would discuss uh, that in our next lecture. So, today let us continue our discussion with the light microscope and the sample preparation for light microscopy. So, as far as the sample preparation for light micro, uh, microscopy is concerned, the specimens to be observed with the light microscope are broadly divided into two categories. One, the hole mounts and the other one, sections. So, what is a hole mount? A hole mount is an intact object, either uh, living or dead and that can consist of an entire microscopic organism or a dissected organ. To collect images from a microscope, the specimen must be in a form that is compatible with the microscope. As long as the sample is sufficiently transparent, it can be viewed with the help of a transmitted light. Here are certain examples where we can see the hole mounts of different uh, plant material. Here you can see the anthers and petals of a flower and the outline and detailed structure of a anther is being observed with the help of a transmitting light microscope. So, 
in all of these uh, images or in all of these structures, uh, nowhere there is any sectioning involved. These are rel relatively small structures, but they are small enough to allow light to transmit through them and thus uh, as a whole mount they can be observed. In some cases sample preparation involves mounting a small piece of specimen in a mounting medium. The mounting medium could be water or it could be tissue culture medium or it could be glycerol. And these uh, uh, mounting of small pieces of the specimen are done on a glass slide and then it is covered with a glass cover slip. To take maximum advantage of the resolving power of the light microscope, specimens are usually prepared in a way designed to enhance contrast. A regular means of enhancing contrast is to apply particular dyes that color or otherwise adjust the light transmitting properties of the cell constituent such as saffronin, such as cotton blue. So these dyes they go and bind to the particular component of uh, the object or the specimen and create a very good contrast. For example, here we can see the whole mount of a developing plant embryo. With the help of certain stain, only certain areas of the these growing embryos are being stained and this creates a very unique and very uh, visible contrast and these contrast also enhances the resolution of the images. Now let us talk about the sections. So many specimens are too opaque for microscopic analysis unless examined as a very thin slice or section. And uh, these are th these objects or specimens are cut into thin slices or sections with the help of a device which is called as microtome. Upon cutting of these sections, these uh, structures are fixed. So these tissues are first treated with fixatives that kill the cells while maintaining the structural integrity of the cell. The most widely employed fixatives are acids and aldehydes such as acetic acid, picric acid, formaldehyde and glutaraldehyde. So a uh, common diagrammatic or schematic representation of how a specimen is cut and how these are mounted on a structure. So uh, the most common things which are needed to make a sectional preparation are first of all we require a specimen. then we require uh, something which is very sharp, I mean a, a razor blade. It could be of a single edged blade or it could be a double edged blade and something which could hold the sections with the help of paint brush. We can handle these cut sections. It is also important to maintain the hydration of these thin cut sections and to maintain that we use a water container. So all the sections which are cut with the help of razor blade or any sharp knife, they are put temporarily in a water container also sometimes called as a watch glass or a petri plate. These thin cut slices, they are transferred on a glass slide. On a glass slide, they are transferred in a mounting medium. We shall talk about this mounting medium later on in our discussion. So after the transferring and this transfer is done with the help of a paint brush because these thin cut sections are very delicate. So upon transferring it is covered with the help of a cover slip 
and then they are observed under the microscope. For the purpose of fixation, aldehydes are most commonly used uh, and sometimes glyceraldehydes are also used. So, how uh, these aldehydes work? So, aldehydes act by cross-linking proteins while alcohols act by precipitation. A good fixative rapidly penetrates the cell membrane and immobilizes all of its macromolecular structure in such a way that the structure of the cell is maintained as close as possible to that of the living state. One way of fixing tissues is to plunge them in a fixative solution. After fixation, the specimen is usually permeabilized to allow a stain to infiltrate the entire tissue. Here, with the help of a diagram, a fixation has been explained. So, when alcohol is used, alcohol takes away all the water molecules and when formaldehyde is used, formaldehyde uh, infiltrates into the cell and they cross-link with the protein and thus they do not allow any denaturation of the protein and maintaining the structure of the intracellular components as close as possible. The process of fixation is further uh, followed by the process of embedding. The tissue is dehydrated through a series of alcohol uh, because paraffin is insoluble in water. Therefore, any water in the specimen must first be removed and then embedded in a medium such as plastic or paraffin wax that provides mechanical support during sectioning. Paraffin is mostly used as an embedding medium because it is readily dissolved by organic solvents. Uh, the processed tissue is usually placed in warm liquefied paraffin and allowed to harden. The wax which both surrounds to the tissue and infiltrates it hardens upon cooling thereby supporting the tissue extremely uh, externally also and internally as well. The resulting solid paraffin block is then trimmed to the appropriate shape before being sectioned. Specimens may also be embedded in epoxy plastic resin or tissue can be simply frozen which is an alternative way of providing the support. So this is how embedding is done. So the liquid paraffin is put in our mold and then in this the fixed sample is put and they are allowed to cool and after cooling the solid paraffin block which now contains the fixed material uh, is obtained and they are then trimmed as paraffin block to be put on a microtome. Now sectioning is done and the specimen is then mounted on a block of wax and cut with the knife of a device called as microtome into thin sections. The specimen is thus sliced into sections that are thin enough to transmit light. So this is a, a very simple microtome which holds the specimen block and then this specimen block cuts with the help of knife and these small thin sections are put on a microscope slide. The specimen is basically mounted on an arm of microtome which advances the specimen by small increments towards a metal or glass blade that slices the tissue into thin sections. The microtome knives are usually constructed of a polished steel for light microscopy. So you can see here uh, th this is how the microtome arm keeps on moving in this circular fashion. So the first movement is downwards, then the second movement is withdrawal, third is upward and fourth is for the delivery. So every time it uh, goes downward and there is a knife or the blade here, so the section is cut and the suction is thin enough to be observed under the microscope. The, some samples are frozen and cut on a crystal, uh, cryostat. Frozen sections are more suitable for immunolabeling. The sections are then mounted on a glass slide. Slides containing adherent paraffin sections are, immense, uh, are immersed in toluene 
which dissolves the extra wax leaving the thin slice of tissue attached to the slide. So, this is how the entire band of thin sections are formed. The sections are then subject to staining uh, with the help of any dye or antibodies adapted for this purpose or enzymes and very often a series of treatments are applied each with an affinity for a different kind of cellular component and after staining a glass cover slip is mounted over the tissue using a mounting medium that has the same refractive index as the glass slide and the cover slip. So, this is the entire process of fixation and staining uh, and then after the staining they are observed under the microscope. So, after this entire uh, process of uh, fixation and staining uh, so, this is the entire sequence of event of the sample preparation of uh, any specimen for light microscopy. In our next lecture, we will try to understand a different variation of light microscopy that is fluorescent microscopy and its principle and its various components and then we shall move further towards electron microscopy. Thank you so much for your patient listening.